Hello everybody, Jennifer Maker here. Do you want to build a snowman? I just love how you can make a 3D object like this completely out of paper and how we can adjust a design like this for different themes or holidays. With just a few tweaks, we can take it from wintry to Christmas to Valentine's Day. So let's head on over to the craft table and we'll get started building some snowmen. I love snowmen or snow people. They always have so much fun. I've made several snowman designs before, including a really popular one that uses glass fish bowls. Do you know that one? This light up paper version is a great companion and it doesn't require tracking down those tricky glass bowls. He looks really complex, but it's not. As with all of my paper-based projects, it starts with high quality cardstock. I'm using white for the snowman and several accent colors. Try to get solid core papers like those in my materials list, especially for the hat and the colorful accessories so the white edges of the paper don't show. I use my Cricut Maker 3 cutting machine, but you can use any cutting machine for this, including an original Cricut Maker or any Cricut Explorer. You'll also want a green standard grip mat to cut the cardstock using the fine point blade. I'm going to use score lines for my creases, so I'll use a scoring stylus. Our usual paper crafting tools will help us build our new friend too. I'll also show you how to add a layer of wax paper to the inside of your snowman. It will really soften the light nicely. Wax paper cuts it best on a blue light grip mat. And when it's time to put it all together, I'll use my favorite craft glue, Barely Art Glue, which works great on paper crafts. And I'll show you a few light options for the inside, like this two and a half inch color changing tea light or a string of fairy lights. Make sure you have the right batteries so your snowman lights up. And are you ready? Let's build a snowman. Step one, get my free light up snowman designs. Go to jennifermaker.com slash 456 and look for libraries in the red bar at the top. Then either click get a password if you don't yet have one or click enter the library. You can find the designs by searching for number 456 and then click it to download the zip file. Inside the zip folder are digital files for a cutting machine, as well as PDFs that you can use to cut them by hand. There's also a reference sheet that labels every piece, so you always know which piece goes where. The SVG folder has three different designs with separate versions for score lines or dashed cut lines to create the creases. There's a general wintry snowman one that's all ready for Valentine's Day, and a Christmas visitor. I'll show you how to make him using a scoring stylus, which requires the file with score tool or stylus in the name. Use the same steps for the others. Upload the correct file to Cricut Design Space and add it to your canvas. If you're not sure how to do this, go to jennifermaker.com svgs to learn how to unzip and upload files. Step two, prepare your paper snowman design. Here's how the Christmas snowman design looks on my canvas in Cricut Design Space. You can zoom out to see all of it by clicking on the minus sign on the lower left. The tea lights I've listed in my material list fit perfectly in any of the snowmen, but if you need to resize one, keep the lock icon at the top closed, adjust the dimensions, and use fairy lights instead. I'm going to leave mine this size. Let's adjust the score lines, which are the nine layers with faint lines in the layers panel. First, select the design and click the ungroup icon. Hold down the shift key and click the intended score layers in the layers panel starting at the bottom. Make sure the color swatch in your top menu panel is still red. If not, you may have clicked another layer by accident. Just click off of the design and try again. Change the operation at the top from basic cut to score. The lines turn dashed, which means the machine will score them. To keep the score lines with the right cut layers, hold down your shift key to select a score layer and the cut layer directly below it in the layers panel. Then click attach at the bottom. The newly attached layers will jump to the top of the panel. Repeat for the other cut and score layer pairs. The gray shapes can be cut out of wax paper to diffuse the light if you want. 
If you don't want to make these, just delete those layers. I'll make them and show you how they work. Step three, cut your light up snowman design. Your design is now ready to cut. Make sure the correct machine is selected and then click make it in the upper right corner. On the prepare screen, make sure the material size is correct for all of your mats. I'm using 12 by 12 cardstock for everything. Then select the first mat and click continue. On your make screen, select the medium cardstock setting and change the pressure to more for a cleaner cut. If you're making the score like I am, load either the scoring stylus in clamp A or the scoring wheel in clamp B when you're prompted. I'm using a scoring stylus so I don't have to swap tools since my fine point blade is in clamp B. Place your first mat's material on your green standard grip machine mat and use a brayer to make sure it's fully adhered. Then load the mat into the machine and press the flashing button to begin cutting. The first mat has a lot of intricate pieces, so it will take longer to cut. When it's finished, unload the mat, flip it over, and roll it back to release the cardstock. This helps prevent the material from curling and ripping. You can slide your spatula gently under delicate pieces to remove them. Use your scraper to remove any bits of cardstock that are left on the mat. If you run into any issues, check out my Cricut tips and tricks for cleaner cuts at jennifermaker.com slash blades. Keep following the screen prompts to prepare and cut your mats. And don't lose track of the small pieces mentioned on the reference sheet. Step 4. Assemble your light up snowman. Here's what the cut pieces for my Christmas 3D light up snowman look like. Remember, you can refer to the reference sheet included in the zip file so you know what each piece is called. Let's start with the head and body. Lay both A pieces for the body and B and C for the head face down. Use a scraper to fold up all the tabs other than the two at the top or bottom. Fold the three vertical creases on each one too. Fold all the tabs in the same direction, otherwise they won't glue together properly and keep the pieces in the same orientation with the tabs in the same spots so you don't accidentally turn one around and glue it the wrong way. If you're using the wax paper, match up the pieces so they line up nicely at the edges with about an eighth of an inch of cardstock showing. You may need to rotate or flip your wax paper pieces around to get them lined up just right. Lift up the wax paper from a section and put a thin line of glue around your design on the cardstock, avoiding the cutouts themselves. Then press the wax paper down and make sure it's positioned correctly before the glue dries. Wait at least 15 seconds before moving on to the next section so the glue is set and the wax paper stays in place. Continue with the rest of your sections until the entire wax paper piece is attached. Then follow the same steps to attach the other three wax paper pieces to their cardstock pieces. Your pieces should look similar to mine when you're done. Now we'll use the vertical creases and six inner tabs to help each piece take shape. Add a bit of glue on a tab's front and press it to the back of the adjacent section, making sure the edges line up. Hold it for at least 15 seconds before gluing your next tab. The order doesn't matter, just be sure to get them all. And then repeat for the other pieces. Place the two larger body pieces on their sides with the flat bottoms facing you. There are three tabs along one vertical edge of each piece and the other edge is smooth. Add glue to one top tab. Attach it to the back of the other body piece on the smooth vertical edge so your two pieces curve in toward each other and the edges align. Attach the center and bottom tabs. If you have trouble holding the tabs in place, a spatula can really help. When you're finished, your combined piece should look similar to mine, with one vertical seam connected and the other still open. The first seam needs to be totally dry before we work on the other, or it could come apart. So repeat the process to attach your two head pieces along one vertical seam. For the head, the assembled pieces will be smooth at the top and have tabs at the bottom. 
Now we can make our two pieces into spheres by closing up the other seams. Start with the body piece. Apply glue to the bottom tab along the side. That's the wider end of your sphere. Wait until the glue is totally set as the peaches will naturally want to curl inward. Then add glue to the center tab and press it to the inside of your sphere. You may need to put one hand inside the sphere so you can press and hold the tab in place from both sides. Finally, add glue and attach the top tab to complete your snowman's body. Repeat the process to attach your three remaining tabs on your headpiece to make it into a smaller sphere shape. Start at the top, not the center, and be patient while waiting for the glue to dry in between the tabs. Then, find the square-shaped head top piece with rounded edges. That's piece F. Use your scraper tool to fold down the four tabs around the outside edge upward. Place it on top of the head so the edges are aligned. Add a small amount of glue to one of the tabs and push it down so it's against the inside edge of the head. Hold it in place until the glue dries. You can use the spatula to support it from the inside. Now do the same thing for the other three tabs. Make sure to hold each tab in place with your finger or spatula until the glue dries. Now for the face. Find the two eyes, two heart-shaped cheek pieces, and the orange nose. Fold the eyes and cheeks along the center crease lines. Wrap the nose piece into a cone shaped like a carrot. Shaping it around a tool like a Cricut pen helps the cardstock curve without bending or creasing. Roll the ends together between your fingers until it forms a cone with the two tabs on opposite sides at the wider end. The edges of the cardstock cone will overlap just a bit, but the circular end of the cone shouldn't have any overhanging pieces. The cardstock should line up at this end. Close up the tip of the nose as much as possible by rolling the cardstock tightly at that end. Now apply a very thin line of glue to the overlapped area to hold the two ends together and press down until the glue dries. Fold the two tabs inward so they're perpendicular to the nose. Find the front of the head, that's the flat section with a blank space in the center on the Christmas snowman version. If you're making the winter or Valentine's Day versions, the front of the head will be the section with three semicircle cutouts below the blank space. Apply glue to the back of the eyes, avoiding the small cutouts. Make sure the two cutouts, the reflections in the eyes, are facing the same direction so he doesn't look confused. Press the center of each eye into the slit above each fold on the left and right of the front head section. Try not to cover any of the cutout designs at the top. Glue the heart-shaped cheek pieces just below the eyes on each side. For the nose, add glue to the tabs and hold it so they're horizontal. Press the nose against the face between the cheeks. Our snowman now has a face. Isn't he cute? Set the completed head aside for now. Grab the four arm pieces, that's piece J, and fold the bottom tabs up. Take two and glue them back to back so the tabs are still free and face outward. Repeat for the other pair. They should look similar to mine. To add the arms, make sure the front of the body is facing you. For the Christmas design, pick a panel with a full poinsettia with a fold down the center. For the Valentine version, pick a full heart section with a center fold. The winter version uses mittens instead of arms, but the front is a snowflake section with the same fold. To add the mittens, place them with the thumbs facing each other and then glue the trim and heart details on top. Then just glue them to the snowman sides on flat sections. So going back to the Christmas snowman version, take an arm and press the tabs together while sliding them into one of the top slits on the side. I put my arms at the very bottom of the slit to leave room for the scarf later on. Flip the body piece over and carefully add a dot of glue to each tab where it will touch the inner surface. Press the tabs against the body from the inside. 
Use your other hand to press from the outside until the glue dries. Add the other arm to the opposite side. Next, we'll use the connector pieces, the K's on the sheet, to attach the head to the body. Fold the four tabs at the top of the body and bottom of the head inward a bit, just enough to create a flat surface to attach each connector piece. Add glue to the tabs and gently press a connector piece on top. It may not line up perfectly with the edges, but that will be hidden, so no worries. Pinch the tab and connector between your fingers to make sure they're stuck together really well. Glue the other connector piece on the head's tabs, making sure all four are attached really well. With the front facing you, add glue to the connector piece on top of the body. Line up the head so the face is centered with the front of the body and press it in place until it dries. The connector pieces won't line up perfectly, but that's okay. If the connector pieces didn't stick together well, just add more glue and press down again. But this time, place your hand inside the body and pinch the pieces together. Now for the finishing touches. Find the two black circular pieces, that's piece L and M, and the large black rectangular piece, that's piece N. These will form the top hat. Take piece L and fold all the tabs upward where the corners meet. This will be the top. Then take the hat's brim and fold those tabs upward where their corners meet. Add glue to the outside of one tab on the hat's top. Press the long edge of the rectangle, piece N, against it, making sure to match up the top with that of the hat. Hold it to dry. Glue the tabs to the side piece one at a time, waiting for the glue to dry completely between each. Going slowly will encourage the paper to curve instead of fold or bend. Make sure the side of your hat isn't too far above or below the top of your hat. You want it to be nice and neat. Close up your hat by applying a thin line of glue along this slight overlap where the sides ends meet. Place it flat on your work surface and press along the seam and let the glue dry completely. Now you can add the hat brim, which is piece M. Place your assembled top piece down on top of your brim so its folded tabs are inside. We'll add glue to the tabs inside one at a time to attach the two pieces. Start at the front of your hat, opposite your seam, so the front looks nice. Carefully lift up one tab and add a bit of glue. Press it back down against the inside of the hat and let it dry. Repeat for the rest of the tabs. Hold the top of the hat in place against the brim while waiting for the glue to dry on each tab so they all stay together. When you're finished, your hat should look similar to mine. Now to put on his hat. Place a generous line of glue around the inside edge of the hat where the brim meets the side. With the seam in the back, carefully place the hat on your snowman's head and press down. Hold it for 20 to 30 seconds while the glue dries. Now you can add the ribbon, which is piece O, and the holly, piece P, to your hat if you'd like. Add glue about the length of the ribbon's short edge along the hat seam. Then align the ribbon's short edge with the hat seam. Once it dries, wrap the rest of the ribbon around the hat, following the bottom edge. Apply glue to the other end of the ribbon and press it down, making sure it's aligned with the end that you already attached. Fold the holly leaves along the crease, then add a dot of glue to the backs and add them to the ribbon. And finally, glue the holly berries where the two leaves meet. For a finishing touch, you can curl the edges of your brim up using a rounded object like your Cricut pen. Curving the edges against an object keeps the paper from folding or bending. Now for the scarf. Find the largest remaining rectangle, piece R, the two rectangles with tassels at one end, pieces T and S, and the eight small rectangles, pieces U. If you're making the Valentine's Day version, you'll have two hearts instead of stripes for the scarf. You can add the details before or after assembling the scarf, but I added the stripes later to cover up the seam. Attach your two scarf ends, those are the pieces with tassels, to the main scarf piece an inch or two from the end. 
To make the scarf look more realistic, glue it the smaller end piece, that's piece T, perpendicular behind the scarf and the larger end piece, that's piece S, in front of the scarf at an angle so all three overlap. Fold one corner of your larger piece over the top of your scarf and glue the folded section to the back of the scarf. This will make it look like your scarf is one continuous piece that has been folded over and onto itself, like a real scarf. Wrap your assembled scarf around your snowman's neck, making sure the tasseled ends are in the front. Place a bit of glue at one end and then pinch the two ends together to secure the scarf in place. Now add the stripes. I curved them around my Cricut pen, which made them a bit easier to add. Glue the first one of your scarf seam to hide it. Make sure the glue is set and then add the rest one at a time, spacing them as evenly as you can. You could even glue one or two to your scarf ends. For another finishing touch, you can fluff and curve the scarf pieces to make them look like they're blowing in the wind. <laughs> and here's a variation. You can add earmuffs. Instead of a hat, the winter and Valentine snowmen have earmuffs. Find the two circular pieces with slits around the edges, two of piece L for the Valentine's version, or two of piece N for the winter version. You'll also want the thin rectangular connector piece, that's Valentine's piece N and winter's piece P, and the two hearts, that's Valentine's piece M and winter piece O. We'll overlap the edges of the earmuff slits to create the 3D shape. Add a very thin line of glue along the edge of one slit and then bring the next piece over to barely overlap it. Hold it there while the glue dries. Glue the rest of the sections until you have a curved edge around the center of your earmuff. And repeat with the other earmuff piece. Glue the hearts on the earmuffs if you'd like. Add a dot of glue to one end of the connector, that's piece N, and press it against the side of the head, centered on the flat section. Now glue the other end to the other side. Next, fold the earmuffs two tabs inward so they're perpendicular to the sides. Add glue to the tabs and position the earmuff so it's centered over the connector piece with the tabs at the top and bottom. Make sure it's dry and then repeat with the other side. Step five, light up your snowman. To make the snowman really shine, you can place the snowman on top of an LED tea light. Or you could gently place a piece of fairy lights inside and position the battery pack below the opening. Aren't these snowmen adorable? I just love how you can make a 3D object like this completely out of paper. Now you can display your snowman on a tabletop, on your mantle, or on a shelf to brighten up your holiday season. You can even make a Dollar Tree light up snowman to display next to this one. The tutorial for that one is over at jennifermaker.com slash light up snowman and Dollar Tree. If you have any questions about how to make a light up paper snowman with a Cricut that I didn't answer here or anything else craft related that you think I can help you with, please let me know. Leave your question below this video or ask over at, at our Cricut Crafters group at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut Crafters. I would love to see all of your cute snowman too. And that's it for today. Until next time, this is Jennifer Maker reminding you to craft a life you love.